everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, okay. So I'm here to talk about rethinking productivity when mindfulness comes into play. Let's face it, these days everyone is busy, even a small child whose parents are so passionate about uh, turning her into someone who can be excellent at sports, and I mean five kinds of sports, musical instruments take a few extra classes in math, physics, chemistry, STEM subjects, English, and so on and so forth, you name it. Wow. I am also a busy person, so I'm not an exception to be here. Since the beginning of 2020, I began to become the busiest version of myself. During that time, I was studying for a master's degree, working on my master's thesis, studying another undergraduate degree, participating in a youth leadership training program, operating another youth program for young people, tutoring for some students, a full-time job, and two other part-time jobs, all at the same time. And I performed everything pretty well. And people then started asking me, how can I possibly do so many things at the same time? How do I have the energy to be available 16 hours per day for such things? So people often assume I must be very good at multitasking, which by definition is, you know, the ability to do several things at the same time, right? And in my case, not several things, but a lot of things at the same time. See, this world has been designed for multitasking. It allows and also makes us available online and connected with the world all the time. All tasks have to be done quickly, leading to people getting used to doing many tasks at once. And it is sometimes praised in the Vietnamese culture as a virtue when talking about women's ability to multitask. Đang cơn lửa tắt cơm sôi, lợn kêu con khóc chồng đòi tòm tem. Bây giờ lửa đã cháy lên, lợn no con nín tòm tem thì tòm. The fire is out under the boiling rice. The pigs are squealing and the child is crying and the husband wants to have fun. Now that the fire is back on, the pigs are fed, the child is asleep, and it's time to have fun with my husband. So I can understand when they told me I was good at multitasking, it was somehow a compliment. However, it is scientifically proven that our bodies and brains weren't designed for multitasking as they are today. Researchers at Stanford University compared groups of people based on their tendency to multitask and their belief that it helped their performance. They found that heavy multitaskers were actually worse at multitasking than those who like to do a single thing at a time. The frequent multitaskers performed worse because they had more trouble organizing thoughts and filtering out irrelevant information and they were slower at switching from one task to another. Performing multiple tasks at a time leads to the results that not many things are completed in a thorough and profound way. Not to mention it reduces our productivity and makes us mentally stressed. However, many of us think that multitasking is the way, is the key to boosting productivity, right? You might realize that after a while of multitasking day in and day out, you would feel exhausted and have anxiety about what comes next, as well as what is 
chasing you from behind. The things you can control are where you need to focus your attention, which is where you need to make decisions. The more we dwell on things we cannot control, the more mentally unfocused we become. So uh, I've been working with many college students, and I got to know they are all busy every time I ask them. Well, we all are, and it, it's an epidemic. And plus, I'm pretty sure many of you have had the experience in which you thought you were you, you thought you were consistently busy, yet achieved nothing. Well, let me give you an example. You don't feel good leaving messages on social media unanswered, right? And you don't feel good either sending someone a message knowing they are online but never looked at your message. Although it's such a message, it may have taken up a lot of space in our mind in a wasteful way. We cannot run away from the computer, but maybe we are trying to run away mentally and find ourselves procrastinating, delaying, putting off, and then become overwhelmed and extremely stressed out. See, if you don't do A today, you will have to do A and B tomorrow. And if you don't want to do A and B tomorrow, you will be doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G in the next few days. And soon enough, you cannot even get back to the first thing. And now, not only will you have some physical things to do, but you also need to clean your mental mess. You then will have to, you know, move on with life, but remain in a stress state caused by previous tasks, and it's very toxic. So for me personally, even though I do a lot of things at the same time, what I experienced was completely different from the results of multitasking, and I actually get more energy doing all those things that make me busy instead of losing energy to them. That is because I have used mindfulness as a tool instead of multitasking. So why does mindfulness have something to do with productivity, right? You may be wondering. Usually when people, uh, you know, think about mindfulness, they would think of, you know, mindfulness as a state where you sit down, calm down, and meditate or even you know uh, basically you do things slowly and be present to enjoy what you do right without judging it so when talking about mindfulness many feel that it's somehow related to uh, spirituality in many different ways while it does it does relate to spirituality however there is more to mindfulness than one can imagine it's basically you putting your heart into what to do. Mindfulness is very difficult to do in today's society when our phones and computers are always inviting us to open and see new notifications, commercial advertisements, so on and so forth. And the danger is that the whole society is gradually getting used to and adapting to it unconsciously so that during a lunch with um, co your colleagues or friends instead of focusing on the meal and the people eating with you you sometimes check your phones and worry about a certain thing that might go wrong at work or at school that is not mindfulness or being present so why be mindful at all? It sounds at first that focusing on one thing will not help us keep up with the 
with the rapid development of humanity, right? But in fact, it is the concentration on one or a few things to get the job done, well before moving on to another thing that significantly increase work and study productivity. Mindfulness can be understood as something similar to performing deep work, which requires and allows us to focus on one thing, do it thoroughly enough, then stop completely to move on to the next task. That way, you will no longer be stressed because of the feeling that haunts you when you think about an undone task, uh, right? I really like um, a saying from David Allen, which goes, use your mind to think about things rather than think of them. You want to be adding value as you think about projects and people, not simply reminding yourself they exist. So this worry and overthinking make these things linger in our thoughts and memories, thereby affecting our mental health and quality of life. For example, if you wash the dishes right now, you can forget about them and do other things, right? Uh, but if you leave it to wash the dishes tomorrow, or even the day after tomorrow, the amount of work will still be the same, but your brain has to carry the extra capacity of washing the dishes for the next two days. And needless to say how it would make you feel. And washing dishes is not the only thing in the world that will haunt you. There are more to it. Work, relationships, personal plans, investment, children, parents, that's and a thousand other things. It feels like you have some kind of trash in your brain, but you procrastinate to clean it. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and annoy you and pull you down until you have cleaned it in your brain's quote unquote hard drive. The fact that it takes up memory space in your brain will make you much more mentally and physically tired than doing it right away and move on with other things. There will always be something to do. As soon as you get things done, other things will try to sneak in your life and occupy your day. So with mindfulness, you realize that there's no need to rush into the next moment because it will come automatically and naturally. So the difficulty of juggling so many things led me to practice mindfulness and deep work to replace the previous ineffective multitasking approach. And my life changed tremendously. I then got a lot of inquiries from friends and family asking about how I allocate my time, right? And obviously, I only have 168 hours a week like other people. However, I have a very detailed 168-hour breakdown into what I would do during the day and how many hours I would spend doing those. But that nots everything. The most important thing after dividing the time spent on each task is to finish one task completely and move on with other tasks. That way the job is done and the mind is at peace and relaxed without being dragged around by unfinished tasks. Well, multitasking cannot help you do that because you would do many things at the same time and uh, there would then be many things in progress but not yet done and that as I mentioned, can make you mentally tired like an older version of myself years ago. So I do time budgeting, which all allocates 168 hours of the week into different activities, and each activity will have a time budget, and I will mindfully do that activity during the allotted time. For example, 
if I need one more hour to complete a report, I may reduce the book reading time by one hour this week because reading books is not as important as completing that report this week. So this is uh, pretty much equivalent to thinking of time as a currency in which we only have 168 currency units each week, right? You have a budget for every single activity, but sometimes you can save some budget and sometimes you need to spend on a certain task more than initially planned. So in general, it should be dynamic and flexible instead of static or too fixed. Using it wisely will determine your productivity and mental health. Mindfulness is rare these days in a multitasking world, but whoever masters it is more productive and surely more mentally healthy. Once you're mindful, you will do the work in the most focused state leading to the best results. So I want to close my speech with uh, my favorite quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. The present moment is the only time over which we have dominion. So for better health, for better mental health and productivity, consider being more mindful rather than having a mind full. Thank you.